I just finished the third session I have of experimenting with using ChatGPT for playing Dungeons and Dragons, but solo role-playing, which means it's just me. And what I want to do here is use ChatGPT and figure out how to use it to be a dungeon master so that I can play instead of just doing it all on my own. I can rely on it to do as much DMing as possible. All right. Hey, future Kote here. I know you just want to like get in and out. I, I look at the stats. You probably stopped watching even right now. Here's the key things. When you're writing this prompt for having a chat DM, you need to be really specific in some of the things you would take for granted with a human doing. The AI is not good at inferring things. For example, you want to tell it especially two things. One, only tell me what my character would know. Otherwise, it's going to say you round a bend and there's two goblins waiting to ambush you. So you don't want that. That's not fun. Second, you need to tell it to never take control of your character. Again, a human dungeon master would never say what your character does, what they are saying. That's what the player does. But even though it knows how to be a dungeon master, it doesn't know that kind of nuance. It can't leap from the rules into knowing that it should not do that. And you're going to have to tell it this over and over again. The next thing is that combat was actually pretty good with GPT-4 here, much better than when I tried it first with GPT-3.5. I didn't really give it any instruction about combat. I had to give it a little bit of coaching while it was happening. But then it did it quite well. And also people don't like AI because it hallucinates or makes things up. But in a D&D context, this is actually awesome. It'll make variations and do the unexpected thing. And I almost think you want to tell it to make stuff up and hallucinate even more. I mean, that's sort of the creative thing. Another thing that you'll see is you have to constantly coach it. You've got to micromanage it and kind of tell it and correct it as you're going over and over again, even if you've prompted it before. So I'll get to this on the kind of like last part of the video, but there's, I think if you go through this experience, a whole lot of stuff that you can learn about applying it in a business context. You just got to kind of like shift your mind to this notion that enterprise AI is also a game with rules, the state of the system, various players, goals that you have. And then I think it's pretty instructive about how practical or not, and what you would have to do to get AI to work in a business context. So, you know, now you can stop watching or get into the longer explanation. I've been doing this since about August or so, and I just had this session here. And here's some things that I, I learned through that. Now, there's an actual session, a live stream you can go watch if you want to see all the details of it. But this is a sort of a, a debrief. I came up with a new prompt built on prompts I've been using and very importantly, corrections that I've been given to prompt GPT. As I play with it, I'll give it little notes and about how to correct it. And I often save these and then I go back and fix the prompt up again. Now, I've got a link you can click on stuff on YouTube down below or whatever, and you can see that prompt that I used in this session. And I think it's a good starter one. Well, one of the main things I've learned is that you've got to be very specific in what you want it to do. You've got to tell it to take initiative, to actually move the plot along, to make decisions, to have actions, to make things challenging and to involve conflict. These are a lot of aspects of any great storytelling, let alone game playing. If you don't have any conflict, if there's not action being taken, it's not going to be enjoyable. And this is especially true when you're having uh, ChatGPT be a dungeon master is it's almost default behavior is to wait for you to tell it what to do. It's not going to move the plot along or introduce new things. So in the prompt, I've told it several times to take action, to take initiative, introduce conflict. Now, the other thing that you have to remind it of is even though it knows what a dungeon master is and, and it can prove that it knows the rules and could tell you what a dungeon master does, it doesn't make this leap in storytelling where it knows to not reveal secrets to you. So the example that I use, the scenario that I've used this third time is a very typical, you've got some goblins ambushing your character. This happens all the time. So it's a very well-known uh, plot structure. It's easy to experiment with. You've got your expectations, etc. It's great. It's a good base case. But every time I've done it, including this time, it doesn't realize that it should not tell me that there's goblins in the forest waiting to ambush me. And instead, it tells me that and then ask me what I want to do. This is kind of an astonishing thing that I think is indicative of how specific you need to be in your prompt and also like how the AI operates. Like it should infer from all that it knows about being a dungeon master, it would be pretty obvious that you don't tell people that there's goblins hiding in the bushes to ambush you. That's just basic storytelling. But once you tell it this, and what I like to tell it is to only narrate what's happening from the perspective of a character. Don't reveal secrets and things that it doesn't know and provide some examples if a goblin was waiting to ambush it. Because otherwise, pretty much every time it's going to trip up doing that. 
Be specific in what you're doing. This is something that you evolve over time as you play with it more and more or you use it is you pick up on errors that it makes. And one technique that I have with this is, so what I do is I establish a back channel, a convention. I say that if I'm going to give you notes, uh, I'm going to give them in curly braces. And so I'll say, next time, don't tell me there's a, a goblin waiting to ambush me. And generally, it adapts to that pretty quickly. It's a lot better recently as of uh, April 2024 than it used to be. It sticks to and adapts to that stuff. And in Dungeons and Dragons, when you're doing combat and skills checks, you especially have to t- tell it the first time that like, oh, if I'm looking around for something, you should have me roll a perception check. And I will give you the what I rolled and you can tell me if I succeeded at it or not. So you're probably going to have to the first time that you in do this in an adventure, correct it and tell it, which is probably the case in all sorts of other usage. So you really want to establish in your head when you're playing with it, you're going to give it a lot of instruction, a lot of coaching. And one of the most important things when thinking about how precise it is, is you have to repeat over and over again to emphasize player autonomy. Don't take actions for the players, for the player characters. Don't say what they think. Like I always tell it, it's okay to say what they feel and what they sense, right? Something that the, an exogenous thing that the environment's causing them. But if you don't do this at the beginning, it's actually going to say, and then your player did this, and then they did this, and then they said that. And it's probably going to say that anyways, and you're going to have to coach it and correct it to not do that. Now, this reminds me, the actual adventure that I used, I just wrote a very brief synopsis of it and asked ChatGPT to make an adventure, which I think worked out pretty well, actually. I I had it do it over one more time to set it in the Forgotten Realms campaign setting, but the adventure script worked out well. It was simple. It even spelled out things to do. Now, the only thing with that adventure script is that I gave ChatGPT this adventure, and it basically just played through half of the adventure going up to the point of the goblin ambush, which I let it do, but I need to remember next time what I should do is tell it the starting point in the adventure, right? So if you have an adventure written out an outline, it's probably good to, again, be precise and put something in there that says start here because otherwise it'll like narrate what's going on. So this time, when I've done combat in the past, especially at the beginning back in August of 2024 with like GPT 3.5 or whatever, like it wasn't really that good at it. The last time I did this goblin ambush thing, I think I was like pushing it too far. I was expecting too much from it. In this instance, when I had a pretty simple scenario, one character first being ambushed by two goblins and then again being ambushed after they retreated by three goblins, It actually did okay. Like it kind of understood about doing initiative, figuring out the order that people go in, again, following rules. And then it assigned two of the goblins to be attacking with a bow and an arrow, very typical thing. And another goblin to be like a a close end fighter, which has been documented in several adventures. Now, what it didn't do, and this is an example of needing to coach it, is it told me everything that the goblins did and then asked for my move. But when te- in telling me what the goblins did, it never actually told me if they succeeded in attacking my character or not. So I had to tell it to actually roll it and go back and see what it was. So, okay, I got that a little bit wrong. And I'm going to go over it because I think it's also interesting. So first, it did actually successfully uh, roll the attacks and tell me what they rolled. And it said the damage that the goblins did if it managed to hit my character. So then after I gave it the armor class, I had to rerun the combat and it messed it up kind of just wrote about like, it tries to hit you with an arrow and it didn't actually make a roll to see if it had hit, but it had all the information. It had the armor class. It had previously done rolls for it. Who knows if those were actual rolls or it was just making up numbers, doesn't really matter, but it didn't actually do those rolls. And that's when I needed to prompt it. What's interesting there is that, uh, I guess the non-deterministic nature of it, that you would expect it to behave as it did previously, but just by giving it some different information, or just time, something wronger happened. Anyways, let's get back to it. Another thing that was actually really good about combat is you could tell it actually had looked up the the stat block, the characteristics of the goblins, which is not something I gave this session. Sometimes when I've done this experiment, like I load up the entire monster manual, which has the characteristics of goblins. But this time I hadn't loaded anything. And based on what it was doing, the damage that the goblins were doing, the bows that they were using, it knew some of that. Now, interestingly, like it obviously gave 
at least one of the goblins, way more hit points than it actually had. Because a goblin is supposed to have eight hit points, I think. And at one point, my character did 17 points of damage, and it was still alive. The maximum amount of hit points a goblin has is 12. Also, it it invented that one of the goblins had a uh, javelin, which is not a standard goblin thing. This gets us to another thing that's interesting in this context, is one of the main things people don't like about generative AI or AI, I'll just call it, is that it'll make things up. And in fact, if you look right now about a lot of the discussion about using AI in a business context, a lot of it is about making sure it's correct and giving answers that are valuable to your business. There's that case of, I forget which government up in the in New England there, gave some wrong advice about following rules, the law, and you don't want that, especially as the government. But in this case, you do want it to follow the basic rules of combat and things like that that I was saying and, and other mechanics of D&D. But the chance that it will make things up or hallucinate is actually valuable in a playing context. So as I was saying, one of the goblins had a javelin. Now, this is highly irregular. Goblins typically have a, a, a scimitar. I don't know why it's a scimitar, a short sword and a short bow. They might have a dagger, you know, but uh, a javelin is very odd. You don't really encounter a lot of goblins that throw things. So the fact that it invented this is curious. Now, the characteristics of a javelin are you can actually use it in, would you say, melee? It's, it's just like a little spear, basically. So you can use it in combat, like face to face, or you can throw it. And so it means that this goblin can attack at range or it can attack close in. And you can also carry multiple javelins. So it's an interesting choice for a goblin. And I don't know, that was fun. You don't encounter that very much. All right, I can't believe I missed this point, but you know, I was complaining about the uh, goblin had too many hit points. Well, that's another example of hallucinating that actually is fun. It's actually fun to have a variety of hit points, not just the published one. It kind of adds this reality to it. If you're a dungeon master, like taking the time to do that can just be super annoying. Uh, But I've especially found with higher level characters uh, who are much more powerful, if you kind of vary up the amount of hit points that monsters or NPCs have, it it can make it more interesting because it's variety and not just the same sort of thing. So good job. Another thing I tried that I've been trying is image generation. Now it's relatively recently that in chat GPT, you can create the Dolly images uh, in line and chat GPT is not as good at mid journey. However, What's valuable about having image generation in ChatGPT is it has the context of what's going on. So you can basically say, create that scene for me. I thought I'd provide you an example. Here's an image uh, in in my Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden adventure of the adventurers uh, inside uh, the hook, line, and sinker. I think this is in Kerr Koenig or something. Uh, And... um, I just asked to illustrate the scene. They're, they're inside this, this inn, this tavern, uh, talking to someone. And, you know, it's a good picture. It even got some text right, if you can see up in the, the, uh, the corner there. Now, the thing is, it got the elf ranger kind of correct, but then it really screwed up on the halfling druid. No halfling there at all. So unfortunately, when I tried to have it in this combat situation create a battle map, it just failed out. Who knows why? Maybe it was tired. However... What I asked it to do was to create an image generation prompt, uh, which I then took to mid-journey, and I had mid-journey create uh, a battle map for it. The battle map wasn't, like, super perfect, but it was pretty good, except for this big box of crates. If you just wanted to ignore the crates, it would have been perfectly usable in this scenario for a battle map. I also like the maps bigger. You could have zoomed out. It would have been great if I asked ChatGPT to generate the image and it put that in line, or if I just wanted to use that map on my own. Now, ideally, what you want to do with this image generation is not just for your own reference. And this is something that would be nice to explore is I don't know how good ChatGPT is at like spatial awareness on a map. Imagine that I have three goblins on a typical goblin ambush crossroads or bend in the road, and I've got the player character. You would want it to update the position of the goblins as it was going. This seems like a complicated thing, but even if it has, I I, I don't know, I feel like it's something that it should be able to keep track of, that it can analyze an image, especially if you have a grid and kind of understand what's going on and then suggest where things move around. I don't know. Maybe you tell it where things move around. Image generation in there is, is interesting and it could be fun, especially if you just want to generate pictures of things, which I don't always care about. I could imagine if you're doing a hex crawl or something, you could have it kind of generate scenes 
from from that hex crawl. One thing that I find with image generation, if you want to do this kind of thing, is to ask it to make a scrapbook or like a pile of papers or a mood board. So instead of just one image, you have multiple images. Or I don't know the exact words, but an artist sketchbook where there's various things that they've sketched and it can give you a feeling for the vibe and the flavor and things like that. But that's definitely something to, to look into more. I have a blog post that I did about how I use Mid Journey to make really big battle maps. Like I like really huge ones and it's pretty easy to do and pretty satisfying as well. So the final thing I wanted to say is that I'm finding that I need some way to keep track of all my stuff, some knowledge management thing. Like I basically just, I use Apple Notes to keep track of this stuff. I just have a folder in Apple Notes and I put prompts in there and notes to myself. And I think that's fine. Like probably what I need to do is just set up a GitHub repo because it would also be nice to have version control over this, right? It would actually be interesting to look over the different versions of the prompt that I have and see how it evolves. I don't know. That's something I should look into. Oh, and and then one final thing. In this instance, I actually took my prompt that you can see in, in, in the link and I asked Gemini Ultra Plus executive class, whatever it is, to rewrite it. And I was starting to use that. But as I looked over it, it was like really too concise and took out too many of the things that I wanted to test out. So I didn't use it. But I think there's probably a lot that can be done as far as having ChatGPT or Gemini write these prompts for you. And I suspect what you need to do is Instead of having it write one big prompt, focus on the little individual parts of the prompt. So let's think briefly about how to apply that in a business context. I think the amount of being specific, of being very prescriptive, is something that in a knowledge working, kind of an office working thing, culturally, at least in Western culture, I don't know about where else, like you almost as a manager are told not to micromanage, not to be prescriptive in how you want people to do things, right? More or less delegate the task and let someone figure out how to do it. You tell them the outcome that you want. And at least in Dungeons and Dragons, that doesn't work very well, right? You've got to be more specific about do things this way, follow these actions, follow these rules, and even being creative, taking initiative and taking control, not doing things for the player. Like this degree of precision and being prescriptive doesn't really exist in the normal like knowledge worker world, right? So that's something you're going to have to do to the AI is micromanage it basically. And sure, maybe you can build up that expectation over time, but like just out of the gate, like a stock AI thing is not going to be imaginative and is not going to take initiative. So then the next thing is like, I would try to focus uh, first and kind of build up to a bigger picture. When I've done these experiments before, I try to like start with the entire world and kind of have general themes and ideas and then have kind of details of a city and a world. And then I have this expectation that chat GPT or whatever is going to create an adventure. But I think in this case, I did the opposite. I started very small and I had a very specific adventure, that one that I asked Gemini to make up. And it was better and more enjoyable. So it's probably better to start with one focus thing instead of saying, I have a grocery store chain, or I need to come up with a new insurance product to sell. And you want to start with something specific, like for this type of insurance and this type of market, selling to these types of people, give me some ideas of how to sell more of it. Well, okay, terrible example. Let's say you wanted to enter the Australian motorcycle insurance market And you wanted to kind of brainstorm what that was like, what the norms of motorcycling was, insurance in Australia. You didn't really know anything about that kind of market. And you wanted to maybe even come up with ideas of features you would have for the insurance. It's actually pretty good at narrowing down to that and asking some specific questions. So maybe that is a better example. Come up with very narrow things to start with rather than big, grandiose things. And then the last thing I was talking about, I think even more so in a business context, like you're going to need some way to track all of the ephemera, all the material you're using to uh, create your your AI stuff, right? Like pretty much, I, I imagine everything that you're going to need to do software development, to do programming, you'll want for your AI stuff. You'll want version control. You want a way of automating, deploying these prompts and setting them up. You want to track who made these prompts up, like track them over time so you can look at them, track and auto putting data in there. And then you're probably also going to want an automated test suite. And 
What's going to be important with an automated test suite is not only the automation of it, but knowing how to interpret the results and figuring out what to do. And I, I think some of those things exist here and there, but as businesses are figuring out more and more how to apply it, it's good to start with that hygiene rather than just like I have just a bunch of files here and there. But that's definitely something in a business context you're going to want to track more. If you want to see the kind of this full play session that I had, I think there's a lot you can learn from it or not. I don't know. I learned a lot doing it. Watching it might be really boring, but you can find that pretty easily. I'll put a link below and you can see the past sessions and there's some other kind of shorter analysis that I've done. And then also you can get the prompt and I'll put the adventure in there too that I used. You can click on that wherever that may be down here. I don't know. Just look in the description. There's a link to my blog where I have that. And it would be really great to hear your experiences and like how you're prompting things. Because I think a lot of it comes down to the prompt that you use. But something that is hard to put in a prompt is like the style of play. So like I was saying, there's a lot of coaching that you have to do. And then I think also proactively telling it like I looked around in the bushes and I rolled this perception check. So there's almost this style of play that I think it's better with that I haven't quite discovered yet, but it'd be great to hear uh, what you're doing if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.